Hi, have you ever wondered how a Keurig coffee brewer works? Well, I took one apart and uh, I'll, uh, let's get under the skin and I'll show you how a Keurig coffee maker works. But first let me introduce to you the major components. Of course there's the control panel, here's the water tank, and then there's the heating tank and dispensing tank which goes all the way from way down here up to here and that is the the heater tank and the measurement tank we'll get a little more into that a little bit later around here on the side we have two solenoids and these solenoids are basically uh, safety devices that if the logic or something unexpected happens and the pump is running and water is trying to go somewhere where it doesn't belong um, and the system is just kind of confused then it'll pump the water uh, the, these solenoids will be open. You know, if all the conditions are not right, then these solenoids will be open and allow the water that's being pumped to be pumped right back into the reservoir instead of all over the countertop. Of course, here's our dispensing section. The handle's missing. Uh, the handle tip typically attaches right here. Okay, and then there's one more component that's buried down, way down in there. It's the air pump, air compressor, and it's the air compressor that actually, you, can, you might be able to see it way back there, it's difficult, but anyhow, uh, the air compressor, the air pump is what actually pushes the water out of this water chamber. Okay, let's run through a cycle and we'll see it in action. Now, the first thing that you normally do to brew a cup of coffee is you need to select your K-cup and put it in the machine. So go we've opened the handle now notice up here there's a little switch up here we got to close it and now now the machine understands that little switch opening and closing that it understands that there's a cake up been inserted and now the menu indicates that it's ready for you to brew. select your size and brew so we'll go for a 10 ounce brew and hit brew we'll quickly come around here and the water pump is in action and it's filling the chamber and when it reaches that shortest pin, the 10 ounce is the most amount of fluid you can go for, as soon as it reaches that top pin, it's going to kick in the air compressor. The air compressor then pushes air into the tank and pushes it, pushes the water out through that vertical plastic tube that you see. That tube, of course, connects to a pipe and it gets routed around here and it dispenses your coffee. Now when the tank reaches, there goes the air and there's a, a, a air pressure sensor on the circuit board that says hey we're done and then the water pump kicks in and it fills it up and when the water reaches that bottom pin it's ready for the next cycle. There it just stopped. Okay, so now we're ready for the next cycle. Another thing that people find frustrating about the Keurigs is that uh, how people are uh, required to descale a Keurig machine, and that's because of the mineral buildups. <clears throat> Ironically, however, uh, Keurig does not want you to use uh, distilled water or, or uh, softened water in their machines. And the reason why is because these pins that come down actually generate a flow of electricity and those pins depend on a certain amount of mineral content in the water for the sensitive circuits to determine water level and if uh, water is perfectly pure like distilled water then those sensors really don't behave very well additionally I always wondered how in the world the the system knew uh, the level in the tank and you'll see here there's two bands of metal, one here and one here, all the way up and down the, the, the height of the cold water tank. And what basically what we see here, it's, it's kind of like a metal detector, but it's for water. And so if the water level is here, the, the, the energy flowing from one plate to the other uh, increases as the water gets higher because it flows through those minerals in the water to uh, to measure 
how, how full the tank is. I always wonder how that was. Then this, this kind of explains that. Then down here at the bottom there's an optical sensor that uh, uh, reads where uh, the water really gets too low and it basically just tells the system to shut down. So let's talk troubleshooting for a little bit. Some basic troubleshooting tips. Now you probably all heard about the, the paper clip trick, which is you push the open this uh, contain uh, the the cup container and push a paper clip up into the the needle and uh, clean it out. And that quite often works for people because coffee grounds got pushed up into there and, and it's plugged it there. If you do that and it does not work, then uh, the next thing to try would be to plug one or both of these holes if there's one or two and go through the brew cycle and see if that allows the, the coffee to be pushed out because what happens is if the solenoid is stuck open then all the air is getting pushed out through this this escape tube and it's not pushing water out of the tank so plug these tubes go through a brew cycle and if it still doesn't work then we very likely probably have a problem with that air compressor that's way back in the back. And so I'm going to show it to you now. We'll take the reservoir off. And this could be, this could get ugly. There we go. There's that magic air compressor. And the problem we had with this machine is that uh, this is a a diaphragm type air, air compressor or air pump and a little tiny particle of plastic got in one of the diaphragms which was not allowing it to close and so the pump itself was had a problem I took the pump off this uh, there's three little screws down here took it off and took the little rubber diaphragm out and found a piece of plastic underneath one of the three little flappy diaphragm things and took it out and now it's working like a charm um, so, those are your basic troubleshooting tips. Um, getting into this thing is a nightmare, and so that might dissuade a lot of people from even trying, but I managed. Now, one thing, uh, if you do get in this deep and you want to check and see if air is coming out of the, the compressor, do not try to take this off of the T connector here. That thing is very, very fragile. I broke it, and I had to glue it back together. And so now it's working fine, but uh, what I would recommend is that if you want to uh, feel or measure the air coming out of the compressor, uh, just cut the tube and then splice it when you're done. Don't try to take it off here as you're probably going to break that T connector. I know some of you are going to ask, how in the world did I get this thing apart? And the answer is not very easy. As a matter of fact, uh, the top and the back that you see here were one piece and I was able to get the back loose but I could not figure out how to get the top off and so I actually used my reciprocating saw and cut cut the two pieces apart so that I could get the back off and then pry this up a little bit and get a, a, a view of what I needed to do to slide this back and, and get it off of the machine but it's uh, you just have to take out a lot of screws and be patient and try not to break anything. That's about all I can say. Now it's time to put this beast back together and uh, hopefully when I'm done I won't have too many spare screws and it will be working just fine.